Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let me welcome you back uh, to my course aspects of biochemical engineering. Now in the last lecture you can remember I tried to discuss some numerical problems and uh, I, I analyze the uh, try to analyze the batch and fed batch process. So we can uh, we have just to find out that uh, report time uh, we can get uh, uh, that you know uh, maximum cell mass concentration in a batch process and also in the fed batch process we can find out that how much maximum cell mass we can produce and what is the time required for the fed batch operation all these thing we try to analyze in the last uh, lecture now this lecture is little bit different because we will be again discussing with the different uh, numerical problems but mostly we will be concentrating on the chemostat process now chemostat uh, now process is considered as a cstr CSTR is the continuous start tank reactor as you know when you, we use that in the biological system we call it chemostat. Now chemostat is a kind of process which can be very easy to operate and not only that productivity of the chemostat process is much high as compared to batch process only, only I, I told you the problem is the cop contamination we have in the during the long time operation otherwise this is the process through which we can get the maximum amount of product formation. So let us start with because we will, we will be taking the example of the different fermentation process as you know the Saccharomyces cerevisia can be used both for Baker's production as well as of ethanol production both the fermentation process we will be dealing with and plus we, we want to discuss some other numerical problems. Now first let us start with that uh, the Baker's is fermentation process. Now if you look at the Baker's is one the problem is one Baker's is industry uh, produces one metric ton of compressed is now what do you mean by compressed is compressed is means that as you know that the Baker's is industry they usually produce two type of yeast one is called compressed is another is called active dry yeast. Compressed yeast contain more than uh, the 70 percent moisture, but uh, in the active dry yeast contain about 6 percent moisture. So, active dry yeast uh, whenever we produce this is used for longer type of operation and compressed yeast whenever we produce that is for very short time because it contains 70 percent of moisture. Since the moisture content is very high, so there is the every possibility of contamination because any bacterial cell can grow because this is it contains uh, you, we know that yeast contain about 50 percent of protein and also it contains vitamin B. So you, any bacteria can grow very easily in the yeast cell. So this is this uh, compressed is usually to be marketed uh, under the refrigerated conditions. So this problem deals uh, on the basis of that. Now <coughs> that uh, one metric ton uh, compresses that and uh, per day. Uh, using the cane molasses as the raw material in a chemostat. Compressed is contained about 70 percent weight by weight moisture. Mu max, Ks and Y x by s value uh, are given 0.5 hour inverse to 2 gram per liter of Ks and Y x by s is 0.5 gram per liter respectively. Cane molasses contains about 45 percent weight by weight uh, sucrose. Initial substrate concentration of the fermentation broth is 200 grams per liter. Compute the followings. What we shall have to compute? We shall have to find out what is the minimum doubling time of the cells. The total amount of cane molasses is required, volume of the fermenters and maximum cell mass productivity. So this is, I consider this is a very important problem as per uh, the biochemical industry is concerned, particularly Baker's is fermentation is concerned and in, uh, this, uh, in this particular connection I want to tell you that if you look at the most of the, <coughs> the biochemical industry or industry that we have in India, 
that uh, most uh, industry they usually operated in a batch mode, but uh, as soon as the World W Trade Organization Treaty was signed, then we have open trade in the different country. Then, um, then all the industry they switch over to the uh, they convert batch to the continuous process. The beauty of the continuous process is that your labor percentage, labor consumption is reduced to 10 percent, and your amount of product formation increases more about tenfold. So, so there is a huge amount of productivity increases. So this problem is very important. So when we start with one metric tons of compressed dry yeast per day, what do you mean by that? One metric ton means 1,000 kg compresses per day. Now it contains about 70 percent moisture. So, so, so how much uh, total solid will be there? 30 percent. So, naturally 1000 into 0.3 that will be 30 kg dry yeast this to be produced per day. Am I right? Now, first we shall have to find out um, that what I shall have to find minimum doubling time. Am I right? So, um, so what is the minimum doubling time? We have we know that uh, that uh, that um, we have already shown you that ln x by x 0 equal to mu into t. Am I right? Doubling time means double the cell mass. So, this is the doubling time. So, x 0 x 0 will cancel. So, ln 2 so, uh, ln 2 by mu is the is the is the is the t doubling time. Now, when 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 this doubling time will be minimum when mu is mu max, this, then this will be minimum. This is exactly what we have written here, d doubling time equals to ln 2 by mu max and ln 2 is 0 0.693 and this mu max is 0 0.5. So, it is coming around 1.386 hour, that is the minimum doubling time that is required for the cells. Now, next problem is that Next problem the total amount of cane molas is required that we shall have to find out. Am I right? So, uh, so question come how we can find out. Now, in this problem that uh, amount of cane molas is required per day, how we can find out. So, 300 we shall have to produce how much? 300 kg of, of, of yeast, the dry yeast. Am I right? So, an yield coefficient is 0.5. So, if you divide by that, you will find how much substrate is required, sugar is required. This is this is 600 kg. Now, let us assume the sugar conversion efficiency is 95 percent because it is the this is the theoretical value. Am I right? So, maybe may not be the all sugar will be converted into the cell mass. So, let us assume that 90 95 percent is the conversion efficiency. Then, a actual amount of sugar requirement will be uh, 631.5 kg. Now, cane molas is contained about 45 percent of weight by weight of sugar. So, if you divide by 0.45, then you will get 1.4 metric tons of the cane molas. This is cane molas that we, we, we required for this. The so second part of the problem can be solved very easily. Now, third problem that we have that we shall have to find out the volume of the reactor. Now, how we can find out the volume of the CSTR? I, I told you, you can remember in CSTR first we shall have to find out tau CSTR. What is the tau CSTR? So, tau CSTR equal to S0 minus S divided by minus RS. Am I right? Now, once you know that, then this is equal to F by F by uh, sorry, this is equal to now, this known as this is equal to V by F. Now, if you if you if you know the flow rate, that volumetric flow rate, then you can find out the volume of the reactor. So, this is how you can find out the volume of the reactor. Now, here exactly that is written here that this equal to tau C S T R equal to S0 minus S by minus R S. Now, minus R S how you can write? Minus R S we can write minus R S minus R s is equal to what? Minus d s by d t. Am I right? Now, this is equal to 
minus d s by d x by d x by d t. Now, this is equal to d x by d s 1 by. So, this is 1 by, by y x by s into this is d x by d t is equal to what? This is equal to mu into x. This is exactly what we have written here. Okay. Now, uh, from the monod kinetics, we know mu equal to mu max s k s plus s and x is like this. Now, what is the, uh, the question come, what is the maximum cell productivity? Maximum cell productivity means that we know there is a situation called d max. What is d max? d max is the dilution rate when you will get the maximum rate of cell mass production. Am I right? Now, uh, so we, we shall have to first find out the d max, then we shall have to find out that d max, what is the cell mass concentration. So, d into x, if you d multiplied with x, then you will get the maximum cell mass productivity. This is exactly what we are trying to do here. So, first we shall find out the d max value and we find this is 0.45 hour inverse and then corresponding s value we find out this is this is the 18 point s value is k s into d max m max minus d max. So, we can find out this is uh, this is about uh, 18 grams per liter that we have. Then uh, if you if you if you come to this uh, uh, e equation then we find that in the sterile feed when you have sterile feed x 0 equal to 0 and then by substituting this the initial substrate concentration was 200 grams per liter and final substrate concentration was that is steady state substrate concentration 18 grams per liter. So, what is the x value will be y x by s into 200 minus 18 this is 91 grams per liter. Now, what is the R s value that we have written? This is the equation. Now, in this equation, we can put that value of uh, y x by s, mu max, uh, then s, then k s, s and x. We can all the values is available with us and we find out this is 81.9 grams per liter per hour. Now, tau C s T r we have find this is the s 0 minus s by minus R s equal to V by f. Now, what is the s 0 value is 200 grams per liter s is the 18 grams per liter and this uh, rate, rate of substrate degradation is 81.9. So, this will give the 2.2 hours. Now, we shall have to find out you see that if you look at the previous equation this is equal to V by f. So, we shall have to if we want to find out the volume of the reactor we shall have to find out the flow rate. So, how you can find out the flow rate? flow rate can be find out if uh, what is the substrate required that we have already calculated the 631 kg per day and what is the uh, what is the initial substrate concentration is 200 grams per liter now 200 grams per liter is equal to 200 kg per cubic meter so this will be converted into this we can write in this form 3.1 this is cubic meter per day and this we can convert in terms of the hour by divided by 24 then the 1.131 cubic meter per hour. Now, we have find out that uh, to, to time required for the uh, CSTR is 2.2 hour. So, you multiply this flow rate you will get the volume. So, this is the volume of the reactor we can calculate. Then, I, we, th then at the same time I told you that uh, how you can find out the maximum d into x. Now, what is the d, d value d max value we calculate? d max value we calculate 0.45. What is the Mm, what is the uh, that uh, that you know x? Let me let me see that. Now maximum cell productivity we shall have to find out then. We, uh, we that you know x value we shall have to find out that uh, I think uh, this x value that we shall have to determine and uh, the x, x value we find is about 91 grams per liter. So, uh, so we can uh, this is gra this is this unit is uh, our inverse. So, so it is it will it will come. So, it will come around 
41 gram per liter per hour. So, this is how we can solve this equation. Now, next problem also very interesting that pseudomonas species I uh, pseudomonas uh, does not require any kind of introduction because pseudomonas is the first uh, uh, organism uh, genetically modified organism that was uh, patented uh, in the USA. And one of the Indian scientists you might be knowing Ananda Mohan Chakraborty, the, he got the patent. And uh, this pseudomonas is very much famous for is considered as the oil eating bacteria because lot of oil spillage we have in the ocean and this uh, bacteria can uh, can remove the that uh, oil uh, from the sea. So, this uh, this problem deals with that that pseudomonas species is the minimum doubling time is the grown on acetate and uh, and in a chemostate operation the monode and these are the different value very simple things. What we want to know that uh, what will be the value of x and x s and x at the dilution rate d equal to uh, half d max. So, we can first uh, we can easily find out what is the d max value, what is the d max value this will be equal to mu max 1 minus root over k s by k s plus s 0 am I right. So, we can we can easily find out the value of bid. So, uh, once we know that we can find out the value of s, s is what k s into d max minus mu max minus d max am I right. So, we can find out s value and once you know the x value we can find out the x value, x value is what x y x by s into s 0 minus s. So, uh, we can find out that uh, uh, the x and s value at d max uh, when now d max when d max is equal d equal to half of uh, half of uh, d max then you can find out also the value of s and x and once you know that then we can find out the what is the value of 0 0.8 d max then you can find out the cell mass productivity what is the cell mass productivity d into x and uh, and what is the cell washout cell d washout will be this at, at washout there is no cell present in the reactor then s will be s0 then with the equation will be mu max s0 ks plus s0 so i i hope it is very simple problem i hope everybody can understand it So, what we have written here the minimum doubling time is uh, can be written as ln 2 by mu max and then uh, we can find out that what is the uh, mu max value is about this and once you know the mu max value we can find out the d max value. Once we have d max value we can find out the d value equal to half d max this is the point to this is our inverse am I right. And then s value we can find out k s d mu x minus this d is nothing but half d max. So, you know that we can put this value we can find out x equal to this and x equal to this when we consider the sterile feed. If you have the sterile feed then what will happen that x 0 equal to 0 am I right and then we can have this equation we can put this this is 70 grams per liter. Now, point when a d equal to 0 0.8 uh, d max then we can this uh, d value will be 0 0.188 hour inverse. Now, y x by s uh, y x will be x equal to what y x by s s 0 minus s. So, we can easily find out the respective value of sub steady state substrate concentration and steady state cell mass concentration we can find out. Now, what is the productivity? Productivity is nothing but x into d. So, we know the value of x, we know the value of d. So, you multiply that we will get the 3.7 gram per liter per hour. Now, d washout I told you that the initial substrate concentration is 38 grams per liter. If you put this value then we will get the the any um, that uh, d washout value. So, this problem is the typical problem I hope everybody can understand can solve by them by yourself. Now, next problem is a very interesting problem that is uh, how we can how we can analyze the cascade type of uh, reactor. Cascade means that multiple CSTR that one after another if you if you if you do that because why we are interested because the reason is that when we operate a single uh, chemostat 
then you know that our problem is little bit simplified because this is single chemostat that so this is coming and going then we have s value we know s value equal to what k s d mu max minus d am i right and y x value also you can you can easily find out x 0 plus y x by s s 0 minus s so you can easily find out but what will happen when this is connected with another c s t r suppose suppose you know that suppose this is the c s t r this is one reactor again it is connected with another reactor so how you can analyze this now this is the only the difference is that when we analyze the one reactor we assume x0 equal to 0 am i right but when you when you go for the second reactor this is first and second here x x is not equal to is not equal to 0 is not equal to 0. So, what you have to do? You have to write the cell mass balance in this equation and then and only then you can solve this equation. This problem deals with this. I hope you will understand that. Let us see how we have done that. Now, the equation the problem is that consider an organism which follow the monode equation and mu max value this and k s is point uh, k is 2 gram per liter. In a continuously perfect mixed vessel at steady state no cell death s 0 equal to 50 grams per liter y x by s is 1. When dilution rate d will, will give the maximum total rate of cell mass production. So, what dilution rate d? So, that equation already we know that d max equal to mu max 1, 1 minus root over k s plus s 0. We put the different value we can find out the d max. So, d max we do not have any problem because we can do solve it very easily. Now, question comes is the second part. For the same value of D using tanks of the same size in series, how many vessels will be required to reduce the substrate concentration to 1 gram per liter? That means, what it says that you have multiple number of tanks, am I right? So, this is connected like this. All are start tank, all are continuously to start tank react like this. So, this is number of reactors. So, here we have 50 grams per liter. So, problem is that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, how many, how many that reactor will be required to reduce the substrate concentration to 1 gram per liter? This is the problem that we have. Now, let us see how we can solve this problem. Now, first we say what we shall have to find out that we shall have to find out that uh, what, what is the, this is like this, this is schematically this process is like this this is the initially f is the flow rate f is the flow rate then x 0 is the initial so this we can assume to be 0 in the first reactor am i right x 0 equal to 0 but uh, then then we can we can we can have this equation we can find out the value of x 1 we can find out the value of s 1 so a, s 1 value is we can write d k s minus d divided by mu max minus d so, we can find out 8.2 grams per liter. Now, we can find out x 1 value y x by s equal to this is 41.8 grams per liter. Then, you know, first reactor we do not have any problem. The second reactor we shall have to find out that what is the value of x and then we shall uh, we, we, we are interested to find out the value of s 2. Because uh, then if it is the, it more than uh, 1 gram per liter, we shall have to analyze again for the, uh, the, the third reactor. So, let us see that in the second reactor, what should be the substrate concentration. For doing so, what we can do? We can, we can write the substrate balance and if we do the, write the substrate balance, this equation will come. This is equal to, uh, let, me, let me show you this, how this equation has come. Suppose, the, uh, what I, I was telling this is first reactor, this is second reactor, am I right? So, this is like this. Now, here you have x 0, s 0, this is s 1 and this is s 2, am I right? And this is x 0, x 0 equal to 0 and this is x 1, this is x 2. Now, if you want to do here the substrate balance, 
substrate balance under steady state condition under steady state condition what we can write what is the rate of input of substrate this is f is the flow rate f is the flow rate here f is the flow rate all the flow rate is f so f f into s1 is the what is the generation generation of the substrate will be zero what is the rate of output this is equal to f into s0 s2 am i right and what is the rate of substrate consumption it is ds by dt into x sorry this is ds by dt into v this will be v and rate of accumulation that will be equal to 0 am i right so this is the equation that if you divide by v both the side this is v this is v this is v then what we can write this is equal to d s d d into s1 minus s2 what we can write this is equal to d s by d x d x by d t that we have shown you before this is equal to y x by s and this is mu d x by d t equal to mu into x and and then then i can write this is 1 y x by s this is mu this will be x 2 second reactor am i right and then this is the mu max into s 2 plus k s plus s 2 am i right so this is into x x 2 and what is the what is the value of x 2 x 2 will be equal to this is y x by s x 1 plus y x by s into into s s s s 1 minus s 2. So, we can we can put this value here and then the there will be a quadratic equation only s 2 will be unknown single equation single unknown we can easily solve it. So, in this problem this is exactly what we have written here and then we can put this equation this is the equation has been built up and finally, we can find out the substrate concentration. <laughs> now, this is coming about 0.293 grams per liter that means, this is less than 1 gram per liter. So, our question our answer is 2 reactor will be enough to reduce the substrate concentration to 1 gram per liter. The last problem that we have with the distillery industry, one distillery industry <coughs> is producing 100 cubic meter of rectified spirit containing 90 percent volume by volume of ethanol in a chemostat from cane molasses containing 50 percent weight by weight sugar using Saccharomyces cerevisiae. The characteristics of the yeast is given here. You have to find out the volume of the bioreactor and amount of cane molasses is required. The almost similar to the first problem only the here the product is different here product is ethanol. So, here x 0 we can if you consider sterile media x 0 equal to 0 then steady state cell mass concentration will be x equal to x 0 y x by s s 0 minus s d max equal to this value am I right and ethanol is considered as a growth associated product. So, we, we assume if we operate in the d max we will get the maximum amount of ethanol production. So, this s value is this and this is the cell mass concentration. Now, 100 cubic meter of spirit we, we shall have to produce which contain 90 percent of ethanol. So, this will be 90 cubic meter of ethanol, 90 cubic meter ethanol is 90,000 liters per day. The ethanol density is 780 grams per grams per liter. Then we find out what is the total amount of ethanol is to be produced. This is the total amount ethanol is to be produced per day and uh, if we, we know y p by s that is the uh, yield of uh, this uh, uh, of your uh, how much product ethanol is produced per gram of uh, substrate then we can find out how much sugar is required. Now, what is the flow rate? Flow rate equal to amount of substrate required divided by initial substrate concentration. So, we can easily find out this is the flow rate and once you know the flow rate then 
you come to tau C S T R equal to S zero minus S minus R S R S equal to this. This R S value we can easily calculate it. We find out this is the R S value similar to the first problem that I have I explained. I am not explaining again here, and <coughs> we find out the value of uh, tau C S T R is equal equal to V by uh, S zero minus S by minus R S equal to V by F. So we know the uh, the, this value, this is uh, 300 minus 23 by uh, two, two, that RS is 12.74 uh, and this is equal to 20 to 21.74 hours. So, <coughs> V equal to what will be the, this is the flow rate that we have, this is the hour. So, the volume of the reactor will be uh, 423.93 cubic meter. Now, substrate required per day, so uh, how you can calculate? We can calculate that uh, uh, that you know that uh, how much substrate we we required uh, per day. We can easily calculate this is this is already we have found out this this much of substrate required. Now it contains about 50 percent of sugar. Can molasses contain 50 percent? So you multiply it by two. You will this we multiply it by two. We will get the amount of can molasses required for this distillery industry. So. <coughs> So, what I conclude here that you know that uh, uh, chemostat process we can analyze very easily and it is a very advanced process and uh, we try to explain that uh, in a chemostat how you can get the maximum cell mass productivity, how you can get uh, get the maximum ethanol productivity, how you can how you can how you can find out uh, the uh, had different uh, dilution rate, how you can find out the substrate concentration and cell mass concentration. Also, I try to analyze the cascade reactor. If you use that multiple uh, chemostat, how you can analyze the multiple chemostat process. Thank you very much.